Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. In this video I will explain how to make um, characters that can interact with the hero. So they are called non-playing characters in Solaris and to create them you just have uh, this icon here, add non-playing character. Actually we already made one in the tutorial about sprites but um, we will explain in more details now how to make dialogues and interactions in general with non-playing characters so double click um, you can choose the sprite so in this example we will take um, this woman here yes then you have um, this subtype field uh, basically somebody or something <laughs> um, and by default it's it is somebody when you put usual NPC somebody there there will be a few automatic behaviors that are adapted to uh, people um, like they will automatically take the appropriate walking animation when you move them and also they will automatically their sprite will automatically look towards the hero when the hero interacts with them so that's what we want in this video and in the what we call general generalized NPC can be used for some other entities that are not actually humans but behave like a non-playing character for example a sign um, <laughs> there is no real difference it's just an entity uh, that you can talk with um, more exactly it's, it's a sign who will talk <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah there will be another tutorial about generalized NPCs but in this one we will just use usual NPCs and then we have an action so this is what happens when the player interacts with the character and by interacting I mean um, working um, I mean touching them and pressing the action key so space by default and then you can choose what happens you can either show a dialogue so this is the simplest way uh, call some Lua code from yeah uh, yeah call some Lua code and then it can be more exactly from a map script or from an item script but first let's just show a dialogue uh, tutorial 18 let's call the, the dialogue tutorial 18 dot um, um, hello okay okay so the sprite appears so I save the map and then I will need a dia the to create the dialogue so I paste the name I I put earlier in this in the dialogue ID field and uh, let's imagine that uh, the, this woman uh, has lost her cat okay so she will say something like help help um, I lost my cat or oh, I can't I can't find my cat and okay so show a dialogue let's try this So I'm pressing the spacebar. Help, help, I can't find my, my cat. Okay. And you notice that she, her sprite, uh, takes the direction to look at me automatically. I didn't write any code to have this behavior. And it's because she's a, um, she's a, usual, a usual NPC. Somebody. 
so generalized NPC is more for from for objects that behave like uh, NPCs. So if you put generalized NPC, you can try. So there will be less and um, uh, less uh, automatic stuff. So you can still talk, but. Um, and if you talk from another direction, it will not even work because then the direction is important. It's the direction you can talk to, and there is a special value any. But um, okay, we'll see that in another tutorial. Another thing we can do is to call the map script because let's say that we want to make the dialogue a bit longer. A bit more. I mean, to make the uh, the interaction a bit more complex, we might. She will uh, ask for help. Can you help me find my cat, please? Uh, will you help me find my cat, please? And then you can say yes or no. So um, the link to the past dialog box script, which is here, uh, we introduced it in previous tutorials. But if you don't remember, um, there is support for for questions, and you can indicate with this special sequence um, dollar interrogation mark. You can indicate where you want the cursors to be. Yes, no. And um, I let two blank lines here and here on purpose because the dialog box make, makes four lines and I wanted this to be in the next uh, section of the dialog. Okay, so now how do we uh, react depending on the answer? Well then, we need some code this time. It's more complex than just showing a dialog and do nothing else. We will instead call the map script. Okay, so let's edit the map script here. I won't need these events. Um, when you are on the map script, um, you can access dynamic entities by their name. So she will need a name. And let's call her uh, just villager. Okay. And it means that in your map script, you will automatically have a variable defined with the name uh, villager because she's called villager here. And by the way, when you just uh, pass the mouse onto her, the her name is displayed in the status bar here, villager. Um, so this is a value of type entity and you can read the documentation. Map entities. There are a lot of entity types, but the one we are interested in today is non-playing character and in particular this event. So this event, if you define it, will be called on interaction, will be called when the hero, the player presses the action, uh, the action command in front of her. And then you can do whatever you want on interaction. Oops. So this is an event defined directly on the entity itself, not on the map. So if you have a lot of different characters in your map, uh, it will help, it will be very simple to define their interaction. You won't have to mm, make a big conditional expression to test the name of the entity. Just define on, a, on interaction on every NPC. 
Okay, so uh, for example, we can play a sound. Let's play this one just to test. Okay, and it works. So we s we still have the uh, human NPC behavior. She looks at me, and then whatever we do here is called. So if you we want to show the dialogue, remember this function game start dialogue. So game is defined here map game game, and the ID the ID of the dialogue was tuto eighteen dot uh, hello. Okay, good. So for now. We we actually just reproduced in Lua exactly what was done by the engine uh, before when we used the show a dialogue action here. It was exactly equivalent to this. To this. Uh, but now that we are in Lua, we do it in Lua. We can actually get the result of the function. Uh, I'm sorry of the question <laughs> and we already did something similar in the tutorial about save games but if you didn't see it or if you don't remember actually the start dialog function takes a second optional parameter a value of type function and this function here that you pass a second parameter will be called uh, after the dialog ends. So start dialog, start dialog, the start dialog call returns immediately, but the engine stores this function value somewhere, um, and then we'll call it uh, when the dialog finishes, and we'll give, uh, we'll provide the answer here as actually the line containing the cursor. So if you remember the dialog, line one, line two or line three. So it will be two and three. So the first thing we can do is if answer is three, then and we need a comment because three means no and then we might, for example, want to show another dialog. Uh, okay, no. And we'll see what we do in the other case, but first let's see how she reacts. Oh no! What am I going to do? because you don't want to help her. Okay, let's try this. No! <laughs> and if I say yes, nothing happens because the else part is empty for now. Okay. So if I say yes, we will make Again, another dialog, the yes part. Thank you so much. Uh, please accept this gift, this small gift, and she will give a heart to thank you. Okay, and how do we do that exactly? Please accept this small gift. So, again, what we want is that after this dialogue is finished, we want to give the heart. So, again, we pass a function value without uh, the need of any 
parameter here because there was no question in this dialog this time and we give a treasure to the, to the hero so like there is a villager variable automatically there is also one for the, for the hero and always called just hero so you have a hero variable on all map scripts and by the way when you want to access entities from other scripts that than map scripts for example uh, I don't know the main script the game manager or item scripts enemy scripts you can't just uh, you don't have the implicit access like this by their name but um, you know, there is a function map get entity that takes um, the name as a parameter but um, okay that's not the subject today start treasure and here you give the item ID that you want to uh, to give <laughs> to the player so a heart in this case Okay. Yes, thank you so much, please. for a lift. And it doesn't completely work uh, for now because so this error message is is pretty clear. There is a missing tre uh, a missing dialogue for brandishing the treasure because uh, in the tutorial about dialogues about treasures I mean I was considering that uh, hearts were never brandished because uh, they were never in chests in treasure chests and never given by NPCs but obviously that's no longer true so what I was explaining in the t treasure tutorial is that as soon as you create an item you need a di the corresponding dialogue uh, and this is a variant for multivariant items you found a heart remember there were, we have some dialogues for the, the sword shield so we also need one for the heart actually and it will work this time So okay, it's it's just an example to show you how how you can you could create side quests with NPCs and trading uh, some objects. And notice that you really it's really important to pass a function value here because if you start the dialogue like this and then start treasure heart. Uh, it will not work at all <laughs> um, because this function returns immediately so this will be called right away maybe it will... I don't know <laughs> okay it even crashed the dialogue is already active we can start to several dialogue at once Um, yeah, it's it's a small bug that uh, there is a crash. It, it should just properly show an error and continue. Anyway, uh, I was just trying to say that it's important to understand the difference um, between calling just calling a function after start dialog and really passing a function value to start dialog, so that the engine calls it later when the dialogue finishes okay so treasure heart um, yeah and then maybe we want to uh, I mean once we said yes and got the heart we don't want the same dialogue to start over next time we talk to her. So to remember what happened, um, 
we could very well make a boolean here. Um, cat quest started force started and put the variable to true here and say if cat quest started then um, we will say something else um, started I don't know or, or just done find my my cat not my sha uh, sorry in here else as everything else there is no auto indentation feature yet at least for me so does it work yes and then she say, did you find my cat? And if I leave the map, oops, I can't come back. Uh, <laughs> it's not <laughs> the same map. Uh, yeah, but if I leave the map, or if I save the game, this is completely uh, forgotten. Because remember that I should really do it so that you understand better. So. Um, from um, outside with from transportation. Okay, okay, it was here. Uh, let me get out. Oh, default destination. Great. So, <laughs> one more time. Did you find my cat? And if I leave the map and I come back, the map script was reloaded again. So it's like another another instance of the script, which means that this was completely reset. So sometimes you want. Uh, to remember things really uh, temporarily on the map and restart them when the map restarts but here no 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 we don't want that we want to save the um, the information in a save game variable and to do this we use game set value uh, let's call this to to do 18 cat quest started because it's a value in the save game. Oops. In the save game. So it will be stored at the same level as, as everything you, you would want to save in your whole game. And here, instead of if cat quest started, we do if game get value. And the same thing. Then, okay. So it's equivalent to what we just had, except that the boolean is now saved in the save game. So a set value can store booleans, numbers, or s strings. Again, you should read the documentation. So this time, if I leave the map and come back. And if I save, they still remember. Okay, nice. So, this is what we wanted. Um, okay. And actually, in the particular case of treasures, um, we could actually merge these two lines. 
I don't know if we, you remember the uh, tutorial about treasures, but when you make a treasure chest or any entity that contains a treasure, there are there are always three three values here: the item, the variant of this item, and the save game variable that stores the state, whether the treasure was found or not. So same for pickable treasures, uh, destructibles, so like bushes, treasures variant, and save game variable. And it's also the same for enemies. We'll see enemies very soon, don't worry. So um, when you do it from Lua, start treasure, it's also the same. You also have three values actually here. The two other ones are optionals. Um, but uh, hero, start treasure. It's here treasure item, variant, save game variable. And actually, there is even a fourth parameter, but. Um, second parameter is the variant. So, variant one because hearts only exist in one variant unlike uh, shield, sword, rupees and the third one is the save game value save game variable, the name of save game variable and so automatically the engine will set this save game value to true so it will give exactly the same result but uh, since I already saved Last time I tested, I should remove my save game file. Just one second, okay. Just to be sure if it works the same. Did you find my cat? Okay. So yeah, start treasure can take a save game variable name here because it's it's very very common to have to remember uh, whether a treasure was was given to the player or not. And the fourth parameter might also be useful in our example. Uh, so one more time, we can <laughs> put another function value, S and that value will be called when the the treasure sequence is finished. That is, after the hero has finished uh, to brandish the, the treasure and uh, after the, the treasure dialogue is finished. So maybe at this point she will say one more thing. Good luck. Okay, good luck. Ah, not leak. Good luck. Uh, okay. Let's try this. Oops, something was wrong. So you should really uh, learn to to understand these error messages. So something's wrong at line 26 of this file. Expected uh, right parenthesis, parenthesis to close the one open at line 23. Uh, okay, I forgot to close this star treasure function. Will you help me? Yes. You found a heart and then good luck. So the you found a heart dialogue is never triggered uh, directly by our code. We don't do game start dialogue and something uh, you found a heart. It's actually the hero start treasure that results in this dialogue. But then this one also take, takes a function value 
and we choose to display another dialog. Okay. Um, if you don't like this, mm, a lot of nested functions like this, you can very well define your functions um, in in a more flat way. Uh, for example, let's let's call this one good luck. Or good luck dialogue. And here, instead of passing an, anonym, an anonymous function, we pass this variable, which is local to this file, and it's a variable. It's the same variable of type function. And actually, we could do this for all steps. Give gift local function give gift so it's as you prefer you can do the same for this one uh, yeah just um, if you do it this way you have to take care of the order of declarations because this one refers to the other one here so I think it should work but but if you defined it before it wouldn't this time it wouldn't work correctly Uh, I found a heart, but she never said good luck, because this is actually a nil value. It's like passing no parameter at all here. So um, it's a bit error prone, I think. And I also think actually that it's less readable, because um, the chronological order of events is this, and then this, and then this and then this so with nested functions okay you have a lot of ends and closing parentheses <laughs> and anonymous functions but um, I actually have less bugs this way uh, and okay you just read things in chron chronological order it's more natural. So there are uh, there are actually a lot of functions in the Solaris API that uh, take other functions as parameters. Basically, uh, anything that has an, an end later in the future, like when you start a movement, when you start a dialogue, a treasure and uh, some other things okay um, so that's more than enough for this episode I hope you enjoyed it now you can make nice side quests with NPCs and complex interactions um, don't forget to like the video if you did enjoy the tutorial and see you next time bye